Okay, this is uh, the Lunatic Astrology episode where we're going to talk with Louise Eddington, um, a kick ass astrologer. There she is coming on into the Zoom room. Hi, Louise. Hello. <laughs> oh my God, I love your lipstick. Anyway, let me just finish my intro since I'm already recording, which is we are here to talk with Louise Eddington, a kick ass modern astrologer who basically is going to tell us all about how she deeply understands Venus retrograde in a way that most astrologers don't. She's been digging in really deeply to this for a long time and is teaching a class on it uh, coming up this uh, next week that um, we'll tell you more about if you stay tuned. Okay, Louise, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh my God, I love your lipstick. How Venus. <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing the Venus. Good job. <laughs> I know. I figured I should. <laughs> How sweet. Are you a morning? Of course, I think Venus is deeper than beauty alone. Are you a morning star or an evening star? I am a morning star, of course. Oh, there you go. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for my listeners on YouTube, um, I'm friends with Louise, but um, originally I met her because I took one of her courses, the Venus Retrograde, two years ago. And that was Venus Retrograde in Scorpio. And that was a game changing class for me. It's how I became a full time astrologer. And it really was an amazing uh, 40 day experience with Louise. So, Louise, tell us a little bit about you as an astrologer and also about uh, why you're so fascinated with Venus. And you're a shaman as well. So, tell us about that. Yeah, well, I've I've been studying astrology for mm, over thirty years <laughs> as a hobby, more more than anything at first. And twenty twelve, I became a professional astrologer, and I'm a modern or Western astrologer. So uh, <laughs> Laurie and I love to banter about that, the differences between traditional and modern, but I think always work. And um, and I also have had a long interest in shamanic practices and I took a year long shamanic practitioner course after I studied astrology professionally. And now I try and combine them both in my work, both through doing astrology readings, a membership. I do a lot of journey work in my membership and in my classes and Venus. Venus came to, uh, this is my third time of doing the Venus retrograde class. So before the one that Laurie took, <laughs> the, the Venus retrograde before that, I actually had a dream um, from Venus and she just told me to do this class basically. And my class is not like some Venus retrograde classes. I try to avoid all the technical things of the um, you know, there's, the, there's a whole lot about the Venus synodic cycle that makes a five-pointed star and it's all connected to the Fibonacci sequence and, and all things like that. Mine is more shamanic in nature. It's more to feel Venus working within you. And the Venus retrograde is really a um, hero's journey or heroine's journey into your inner space. And that's how I approach it. Yeah, I, I, that's a great description that that heroine's journey, inner space journey, and uh, just that which makes me also want to clarify because um, I'm not sure is the class open to men and women? I can't remember. It's just yeah. for women. Yeah, yeah it is. But um, I work mostly with women, and um, you know, I do have men come and work with me, but usually they are the kind of a guy that's not afraid to be around, uh, be about like maybe the only male in the group. Um, yeah, no kidding. The brave yeah. guys come into the women's harem tent. They probably yeah. have their Mars in Taurus or their Mars in the. Probably, yeah. 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 So, I, so let's go talk about this upcoming Venus retrograde a bit because it starts on, um, it starts on the 13th of May and it ends June 23rd. 25th. Actually, retrograde period and uh, to tell us a little bit more about this retrograde period there is a star point in the middle and mm -hmm. what can we expect this time as opposed to two years ago when the retrograde was in Scorpio like what are the themes you imagine will come up uh, as we all go collectively through this retrograde knowing that each of us will have a different experience depending on where this falls in our natal chart uh, which house it falls in but just as a general principle uh, Venus and Gemini you know, that's kind of like, okay, Venus and Mercury sign, uh, going backwards and star pointing, or I think the star point is 13, 13 yeah. Gemini. Thank you. On the 5th, 10th of June. Tell us all a little bit. I had, the, <laughs> what day in June is it? June the 3rd. Oh, you see, I'm not even tracking. That's terrible. <laughs> okay, I'll be in your class. I'll just follow your lead. So go ahead and tell us more. 
Yeah. Well, uh, this Venus retrograde is in Gemini and Venus uh, currently um, is in retrograde in Gemini every eight years. So you would want to look back till 2012 and um, mental math 2004 um, each year, the Ven or each time the Venus retrogrades, it moves back a couple of degrees. Um, so it gradually, the, the, the retrograde points gradually work their way backwards through the zodiac and then till they change signs. But um, this one um, is particularly speaking to me <laughs> because to look at my own personal chart, um, Venus is retrograding... Um, exactly opposite my sun and the star point is exactly on my moon and <laughs> i know it's amazing uh, but i think we're feeling this already the themes of it because mercury and venus are currently in what's called a mutual reception um as we uh do this interview mercury is in the heart of the sun yes, i realize we're, we're on kazemi day Woo! i know <laughs> And Taurus is Venus ruled and Mercury rules, um, rules Gemini. So we're starting to feel the themes. There's a lot coming up around value and values and how we relate to each other and how we listen to each other. I think it goes way deeper than um, just our than our one on one love relationships, which is what Venus is generally known about because Venus is very i'm sorry Gemini is a very sociable sign and it's also about learning and information and how we perceive things so there's going to be a lot of um, work on changing um, our, how we look at things and how we listen to things and how we um, changing our mind about things that's going to be a deep theme I think for many of us yeah do you feel it there's any connection to the the um, the COVID pandemic virus with Gemini ruling the lungs and then Venus as a benefic traveling through there yeah I think there is I think you know it's how we do social life generally with COVID-19 now moving forward is going to be a big theme personally. Um, how we socially distance, but still carry on our lives, how we learn to live with this new changing perception of the world really. And because of the mutual reception with Taurus and um, a lot of other stuff going on, I think there's going to be a lot about how we treat mother earth as well. You know, we've already seen that the air's cleaner, um, that you know there's less noise pollution now because people have been staying home and it's that part of it. it's kind of nice you know? yeah. so how do we change to integrate bringing back in being in the world but maybe being less in the world less of a footprint if you like yeah less of an invasive species yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, yeah, I'm also really intrigued by the, this whole star point idea. Like, I mean, I really got into this only recently, uh, you know, as you know, I started to really look into cycles in my life and how they repeat based on these star points. Mm -hmm. So can you describe two things about star point energy and Venus? Like what, what is the star point technically, astrologically? And secondly, what does it mean in our chart? Where, what, like, what does it incite for the eight year cycle? And what is the idea between that star point to the next star point? What is the journey of the eight years for? Yeah, well, it starts a new, um, yeah, well, it starts in both, both a 19 month journey to the next star point in a different sign and then an eight year journey to the star point in the same sign. And, and it is, it's like a new moon, really, um, a longer new moon only with Venus and the sun because the star point is where Venus and the sun are conjunct from our perspective right in the middle of the retrograde. So it's the start of a new cycle and it can be used in a way, you know, I think it's simplest to liken it to a new moon because most people have heard about new moon intentions and, and the like. It's, it's look at what's going on. And I don't, th you know, I don't think we can use the stars. You know, I think the stars are what they are and the planets are what they are and they guide us. But I do think how we respond to them can um, help us through life and help us choose more wisely, more mindfully. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a good word for Gemini, mindfully. <laughs> so the star point of Gemini really will be about choosing more mindfully um, what we're going to uh, create, which is very, a very Venus word, 
over the next 19 months and eight years. Does that, right. you know, that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, I know that does make a lot of sense. And, but I think it's kind of cool to look at that broader eight year uh, cycle as well, because it's literally, uh, even though the star point every eight years in Gemini is still in Gemini because it moves so slowly over the years, degree by degree, sometimes it will impact very directly on a, a natal planet by angle or a conjunction or opposition. So I, I find it interesting that, that this one, I'll use me as an example for the audience. This is my Gemini uh, fifth house of romantic engagement. So I went back and I looked at what happened, you know, the last time kind of thing, like what was going on, you know? <laughs> I, like, will I expect some kind of new initiation, like an ignition for romance, you know, woohoo. Well, yeah, there was one back then. Now, I shouldn't maybe say that, well, was I married or not married? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, I can expect it. And it was a cerebral long distance relationship. So, I mean, it was writing. Very, very of the mind. Yeah. yeah the, Gemini. Mind the Gemini archetype, you know, of communicating, emailing, et cetera, et cetera. And as so somebody who's been single now for the last, I don't know, four years or something, um, I'm kind of looking forward to this one. I'm like, yeah, like, woohoo. So, and I will be doing a video about that for everybody eventually this next week or two about the all signs star points. Um, mm -hmm. So we can use it like I, what I would say about that in taking your class, you'll learn more about your own chart, but I think we can use it as a way of saying, uh, this is a theme based on the house of the star point that is going in this direction and with this much import for eight years. Yeah. For example, my last, uh, the last star point in Gemini eight years ago for me was in my sixth house of work service in the way I do charts, <laughs> probably the way you do too, actually it would be. Yeah the house system used and I became a professional astrologer um, in my work in 2012. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Yeah. That's, that's exactly perfect. I know how yeah. this stuff works gets uncanny, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And so like the last Venus star point uh, in your class that I did in Scorpio would be my whole sign 10th house. Mm. And, and it was so funny. I'm going to tell the story because Louise has shamanic journey like she's drumming while you're on a call kind of thing. And you, you know, you settle in, lie down. And one of my drumming journeys with her uh, during the class, I, I we might had five or six. I can't remember. I, I had a, a vision that I, took Saturn out of my natal 12th house and I was recovering him and putting him in the first, like it was an intervention to get Saturn where he's supposed to go. And then it was only later uh, after that class when I started studying Hellenistic astrology and beginning this new direction in my, my career actually, that I realized that when I went to whole sign system, Saturn jumped out of the 12th and into my first. <laughs> but it was literally a shamanic journey with you that actually was a foreteller of that outcome. It was so cool. Oh, did you just freeze on me, Louise? <laughs> All right, I got a frozen Louise. Let's see if we can get her back. Unfreeze. Okay, so while well, she's coming back, I will spend some time with you guys. So she'll be back. I think she lost her signal. So anyway, the star point class that she's going to teach, if you're still with me on this, will give you a chance to go deep into your own natal chart, which is what I love about it. Without even being an astrological nerd, you'll get so much value from it. Um, and uh, partly because of the shamanic element and also because she's a great teacher. You just disappeared on me. Yeah, you froze and then my window closed. I don't know. No, that's weird. I'm, I'm hardjacked into the... Uh, mode if I'm not on a Wi-Fi. So there's that Mercury in the heart of the sun screwing around with us. <laughs> Mercury is not just that. He's like literally disintegrated. <laughs> but anyway, so you, I'm sure you were telling the story. Oh, the I did. And I also continue yeah. to explain to people the value of being in the class where you don't have to be an astrological geek in yeah. order to get the shamanic journey aspect of it, which is just profound and magical, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I have two, um, two levels to the class because I want to make it as accessible as possible for everybody. So I have a, a basic shamanic uh, Venus journey class where I don't personally look at your astrology chart, but there are videos in the membership portal explaining how to create your chart and how to find where Venus is uh, retrograding in your chart. But I also have a small group, the Venus Dragon Riders, where they'll get personal mentorship from me. And I'm very excited about that bit. So, and they get personal um, sessions with me and um, my intense focus on them. 
because there is also a, we all each have our own um, natal Venus star point as well, which is important to look at as part of the class. Like for example, mine is um, at six degrees of Virgo. It's the star point that happens be, before you're born while you're in utero. And uh, and that says a lot about you as well, because uh, mm. so we'll be talking about that a little bit as well. I remember learning that with you a couple of years ago. And so in your class for the um, sort of the uh, first level entry point, you know, just a lot of people may want to take the journeys and explore the stuff and learn and go through the journey together. Are you uh, sharing with them that table you shared with us to find your yeah. start point? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And tell me, tell me, I'm just really curious a bit about the Venus dragon riders part of it. Um, I mean, I kind of know more about it than, than, than not, but not totally. So tell me, what are those people getting in that class? That's going to like, be, tell us about the juicy bits of being a Venus dragon rider. I'm really, I'm thinking Khaleesi. Yes, I am. I've got uh, Daenerys in my, and the dragon rider from Game of Thrones in my mind. Now tell us what we get when we ride dragons with you. Mm. Well, it's it's basically mentorship to help you, right? Kind of become your own mother of dragons to kind of really step into leadership and um, to learn uh, more about yourself, so that you can see your own leadership qualities and and um, where you might best be leading. You know, I don't, I'm not the kind of astrologer that tells you this is what it is, but I guide you and I draw out. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be fun. So I'm talking because Louise is freezing again and I can't unfreeze her. Um, so we'll just wait till she pops back. That is kind of cool. Uh, it is Mercury in the heart of the sun today. We need as a god of communication. So we can expect something to go frizzy on us. And um, so while I wait for Louise to come back, I'll just keep talking for our little half hour together. Um, the Venus retrograde uh, experience um, in general, without even taking a class, is going to invite you all to uh, investigate something to do with love or money or how you relate to others and uh, even friendships. And I, I will be doing a video about those particular uh, elements in each of the signs and you'll be able to identify where in your chart based on your rising sign and your sun and moon, it will be happening. So let's see if she pops back in. I don't really want to re-record, so it's kind of funny. Can't make this stuff up. You only can have this happen when Venus is, Mercury is in the heart of the sun. Hmm. So we are recording on Monday, May the 4th. <laughs> I think she'll come back. I do. In the meantime, Mother Earth is behind me in my kitchen. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, I'll give her a few minutes, and if she doesn't, that's our intro to a Venus Retrograde class, a bit of a promotion, and a bit of sharing with an incredible astrologer. I will be in that class because I love to play around with other people on big adventures astrologically, and uh, I may be in the Venus Dragon Riders. I'm tempted to go back into that to that higher level. Alrighty. Um, hmm. While I wait for her to show up uh, right now, I remind everybody that uh, I have a channel here. And if you like it, subscribe, <laughs> hit the bell, get notifications, and um, also check the link below because I'll have her class in the subject box of this video as well as my ongoing sale. The year ahead forecast is off uh, price by $90. It was ending May 1st, but I've had such demand, I think because of the virus and people are concerned about their year ahead. So it's basically 40% um, off, which is incredible for the amount of time and energy I put into uh, the, the readings with you for um, next. Oh, here she comes. Well, you know what I just did? I decided I'd better come in on my phone. I plugged, I plugged um, your course a little bit. Uh, I told them where to find the link below and I talked about my ongoing sales. So I use it for ad space. <laughs> Thank you. I never have this problem with my internet. It must be the Kazemi. It has to be. It has to be. You yeah. must, so between the Kazemi and the Mercury's mutual reception, between your uh, with Venus and between the Venus being so intimate to your moon, like you're just in a big, you're just in a big vortex right now. I am, but luckily I have data on my phone, so I was able okay. to come back in. <laughs> I know, no kidding. Well, we have about, let's see, 10 minutes left. I was going to do a half hour interview with you. So 
your okay. turn. Tell us a Venus story from your own life that, that shares with us how these Venus retrogrades turn out sometimes. Something that happened, like my story was kind of cool about it, it, Venus uh, re retrograding and all that and star pointing in my career house in Scorpio and it changed my whole professional direction. Mm. So uh, do you have any great stories? Well, the first one was the 2012 retrograde where I, um, yeah. you know, it was kind of like a flash from the blue, really. I'd, I'd been studying astrology for so many years, just as a hobby and practicing on friends. And I just turned around one day and I had a business coach at the time because I was doing social media marketing. And I said, I'm, I'm not doing social media anymore. I'm going to do my astrology. And she was like... He was like, you have never mentioned astrology to me in, in your life. And I took my um, laptop and showed her my bookshelf full of astrology books and started studying one-on-one -on -one with um, a professional astrologer and never looked back. And, you know, that's all very Mercury retrograde, sorry, Venus retrograde in Gemini, studying um, for work. Um, so it was all Mercury ruled as well, uh, Virgo, um, was where in 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 my house in the house of virgo so uh, it was um quite a turning point then uh the last one in scorpio was of course up at my mid heaven and and really the second iteration of the venus class really helped my astrology career take off oh my gosh yeah two books yeah two books since yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah until that until that point really I'd kind of been I, I you know I'm a little I'm a 12th house son so I'm but well in my system <laughs> so I can be a little shy and retiring about my own strengths and things and uh having a Venus retrograde over the top of my chart kind of helped bump me out of that a little bit mm. so. <laughs> yeah I find that really interesting too because when that star point is in Gemini of course it's it is like ushering in books like you're you wrote two books so darn fast it's crazy they're published by a publisher I mean you know it was like it was not so fast those two books came out of you <laughs> no and one of them's uh, number three in all astrology books today oh well, let's plug the books and, the, and her two books are called modern astrology modern Modern Astrology and the Complete Guide to Astrology. Yeah, at, at fine bookstores everywhere on the internet. <laughs> yeah, and indie books and all those all those good things. Yeah, so, yeah. So, I know. So, I mean, you're like the epitome of working with Venus. How is Venus positioned natally? I forgot. Is she in dignity? Oh, she's conjunct my midheaven. <laughs> oh, well, duh. <laughs> she's my most elevated planner. Oh, yeah. She's, she's Gemini conjunct my midheaven. Okay, well... No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so those, those, those star points are game changers for you when they hit that Gemini mid-heaven. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited about this one as well, though, for me. But I'm excited about it for everybody. And I will say, everybody who feels drawn to do this class usually has Venus retrograde impacting their chart in some way quite significantly, but particularly the dragon riders. You know, I've, I've got that half full already and um, each one of them, like one of them, it's stationing retrograde on her moon the, or the Venus star point is on their mid heaven. Wow. So, you so know. there's no more room for people to sign up who are in this class. Will you expand it if someone really feels called? Oh, I have six more places. Oh, good. I thought you was full. I'm glad it's not full. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Half full. But yeah. Oh. And we've got nine days till we start. So. Oh, we'll fill it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. yeah, and it's all women so far. It's all women. Yeah, I think it's going to attract the females for sure. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, with being Venus particularly, and and you know they're all kind of on the verge. All the women they're on the verge of, you know, really kind of launching themselves out into the world. And uh, my aim is to help get yeah. them out there. So. Is there a, a vetting process or an application, or is it just if you're interested and there's still room, you can sign up? Yeah, if, if you know it's right for you, then it's right for you. Okay. But I don't think I need to vet. I think people who are drawn to it will be um, yeah. the well, right people for it. That's true. You, you're, you're way more lazy fair than me about this kind of stuff. You know, if I'm <laughs> a lot of time with people, I do all that intake interview and make sure they can get through the door. But, you know, it's 40 days, not 40 weeks, so... Exactly. Yeah. If I was, uh, if I was working with somebody for a year or something, I'd probably want to, you know, know a lot more about them before I work. Exactly. And, and what is the price for the, um, the start of uh, Venus, um, dragon riders? 547. Okay. Wonderful. 547. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. 
That's wonderful. Given and the, there is a two pay available. So. Okay. Given the amount of attention to pay uh, from your my experience with you and the amount of TLC that people get, that's extremely really reasonable. And the transformation is the real the the real. Actually, you should have a warning label. Don't go into the <laughs> Venus Dragon Riders retrograde journey, forty days and nights, and, the, and with Louise, unless you expect your life, if you want your life to stay the same, because something will dramatically change. Something will. And I and I'm really only interested in working with people that are prepared to do the work. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't want yeah. to, people who aren't in the group to really be in the group because it's you know there's yeah. a bit of space to do that. Sweet. But, but there's still a lot of value in the, in the basic class as well. And that's $108, um, you know, and there will be a Facebook group for connection, connection with others because mm -hmm. that's part of Venus as well. And, and Gemini, you know, connecting socially with others. Um, you just won't get me looking at your chart. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. 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 I know. I'm sure that that would be a really yeah. good ride as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's like, well, well, one is coach and one is first class, in other words, but you still get where you're going, you know, you still get to the destination, which you will journey and transform thanks to the guidance of a shaman mm -hmm. astrologer and something essential will be connected. Uh, a dot that was unconnected in your life will be connected and you, you may connect it anyway, but it might not be the strongest uplink. You know what I mean? You might want to take the journey consciously through Venus retrograde to have a really strong connection, super strong uplink to the highest destiny that Venus offers you as she does her, her star point this year. Well, one other thing I'm offering in the Jet Venus Dragon Riders group is um, an opportunity to present to the group. It's a small, safe, private group, you know, so that you, even if you don't think you have a thing yet, we're going to identify a thing and give you an opportunity to, to just practice. So, you know, that's part of Gemini as well is very much about work, doing the work, researching, practice, practice, communicating. Yeah. And like skills, and skills, you know, things yeah. that you are skilled at or want to be skilled at and to learn to be mm -hmm. skilled at is very Gemini, very trade yeah. in a way, the trades, you know? Yeah. So even if it's not the thing you end up doing ultimately, it's going to be a part of it and it's going to help you when you go out after the class well yeah i know yeah. it's so funny we're finally here you and i've been talking about this class for a year because i couldn't wait for it <laughs> <laughs> i know i know so, well, i've been thinking about it since the last one and next, after this one i'll be thinking about the next one. i know she, she's like she goes from one to the other just waiting for the next well i'm really so grateful you came on to talk about it and i really hope that some people who listen to this are called to go investigate it and the links are in the description box below to louise's site where you can go look at the dragon rider versus the uh, everyday rider version of the course and uh and go have some fun with that i'll be probably taking since i've already done the, the super deep one and now i'm super astrological i might just jump in with the the 97 dollars one and have fun with a, a large group of people uh riding along with everyone else <laughs> Yeah. yeah well and you're busy as well so <laughs> i am very busy thanks to you thanks to two years ago <laughs> yeah you yeah. couldn't you couldn't you could not make a better story about changing careers and having it succeed um i do have neptune in my 12th house as well and so as that um, whole thing was happening you know i was activating the this neptunian aspect of me and uh you know mm. neptune's uh, uh, attached to mars in my second house of earned income so that explains why this happened <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that little shrine. All right, my dear, thank you for coming and thank you for prevailing despite that yeah. glitch that we had today. Oh, well, you have to roll with it, don't you? You exactly. have to. I like, I inserted a commercial break. It was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Thanks, so Lori. Much, Eddington, mm -hmm. and uh, I wish you well on the journey of uh, dragging, riding with dragons and people in your class, and I'll see you there as well. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>